Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 2 in Azure Data Factory playlist. In this video, we are going to learn how to create Azure Data Factory using Azure Portal. So in the previous video, we walked through the overview of Azure Data Factory. So we learned what is Azure Data Factory and what are its capabilities. In this video, we are going to practically create Azure Data Factory using Azure Portal. So let me go to the Azure Portal. So this is how Azure Portal looks like. So we need to click on this create a resource option. Once we click, it will display all the services provided by Azure. So we need to type data factory here. So it's giving options in drop down. Let me select this first option. So our requirement is to create data factory. So let me select this option. And let's click on create option. So by default, your subscription would be selected here. If you do not have a paid subscription, you can create a free trial subscription that will probably give you $200 for the period of 12 months. So prerequisite for creating Azure Data Factory is you need to have a subscription. Then we need to select resource group. So either you can create new resource group or you can select from the existing resource group. So let me select a new RG, which is an existing resource group for me. And here you need to provide the Azure Data Factory name. So let me provide name for my data factory as suppose a new demo hyphen ADF. Okay. So it has validated the name. So since it is in accordance with the naming convention, it has given this tick mark. Suppose if I give any other symbol, suppose I'm giving this pound symbol, it will not recognize it. And it says the name can only contain letters, numbers and hyphens. Okay, so let me remove this and let's wait for the validation to be completed. Yeah, so this is a valid name and then we need to select the region. By default, it is giving us East US, so I'm good with it and version is V2. So this is the latest version that is V2. So now let's go to the next option that is Git configuration. So as we know, ADF can be integrated with GitHub. With the help of Git, we can do the version controlling and also we can collaborate with other developers working on the same ADF. Okay. So I'm not going to configure Git right now. If I uncheck this, it will give me options to configure Git as well. I will be doing it later. So I'm checking this configure Git later. Now let's go to the next option that is networking. So currently I'm not going to change anything. Let's leave it like that. Let's go to advanced tab. Let me go to tag option and hit on review plus create. Okay. So it is currently validating it. So validation has been passed and we have the option to create the data factory. So let me hit on that. So deployment is in progress. Let's wait. Yeah. So you can see deployment has been succeeded and now we have the option to go to the resource. So let me click on this. So our ADF is ready. You can see the name we given is Anu Demo hyphen ADF. So to go to the Azure Data Factory Studio, we have to click on this Launch Studio option. So it's opening our Azure Data Factory workspace. So now you can see the URL has been changed. Earlier it was portal.azure.com and now we have landed to adf.azure.com. So to open ADF Studio, either you can navigate through this Azure portal or you can directly uh, search for adf.azure.com So you can see it is giving an option select an existing data factory or you can create a new data factory from here also and it is giving us a default name since it is having a dot we need to remove that okay so directly from adf.azure.com also we can create Azure data factory since we have already created I am going to close this so let's have a look at different options present here. So currently we are at the home page and here we have few wizards, which is nothing but a shortcut key to perform certain tasks. So the first tab is ingest. This is a template to copy data. By using this template, you can directly create a copy data activity and also you can add a trigger to it. So I'm not going deep into this template for now. Let me hit on cancel. Now coming to orchestrate, if I click on this, it will directly redirect me to a new pipeline creation option. Okay, let me cancel this for now. 
and let me go back to home again. So now the third option is transform data. So if I click on this, it will redirect me to data flow option and we can directly create a data flow here. Okay. And if you want to lift and shift your SSIS package, you can click on this configure SSIS option and it will start creating Azure SSIS integration runtime. Okay. So let's click on cancel. So these are just kind of shortcuts which you can use directly from the home option. So apart from that, you can also set up the code repository, which means you can integrate Git with ADF using this setup code repository option. Okay. So let's hit on cancel for now and let me scroll down. So here we have something called pipeline templates. So if you don't want to build your pipelines from scratch, you can use these templates that will make your job easier to create a pipeline. For example, if you want to move files, you can use this template and hit on continue. It will create a sample pipeline for you. You just need to provide the required details and according to your requirement, you can also modify the uh, pipeline generated after using this template and you can make some small tweaks here and there to achieve your requirement. So let me hit on cancel. Now let's go to second tab, which is author. In this author tab, we can create pipelines, data set, data flow and power query. So we will learn everything in details like what is pipeline and what does a data set do and how does a data flow looks like. So everything we will be covering in the next video. For now, let's just have a look on this UI. So to create a pipeline, either you can click on the ellipses present in pipeline option and hit on new pipeline or you can also cl click on this plus option and select any of the resources present here. If you want to create pipeline, click here. Or if you want to create data flow, you can click directly from here also. Okay. Now let's go to monitor tab. So this is where you will be monitoring your pipeline execution. By default, it has been selected as triggered. So if you have debugged your pipeline, you can go to debug option and you can see all the pipelines which has been debugged for last 24 hours. You can also modify the date range to last seven days or 30 days, or you can customize it. If you want to have a look on the history of the pipeline runs. So currently I think uh, we can have a look at uh, past 15 days pipeline execution and we can also apply some filters to monitor the pipelines. For example, we can have a look on all the pipelines which has been succeeded for last seven days or all the pipelines which are in progress currently or all the failed pipelines for last 30 days. So like this, we can add a filter. And if you see here, uh, the edit columns option is disabled for debug run. But if you go to triggered option, you can edit columns, which means you can customize your experience. So you can drag and drop the column names. Suppose I want to see annotations after pipeline name. Then let me click on OK. So annotation came after pipeline name. OK, so we can remove the columns or we can add few more columns to track the pipelines. Okay. So these are the available options and you can also monitor your trigger runs. So you can monitor all the trigger runs here and also you can export the results into a CSV file. Now coming to integration runtime, you can see by default we have auto resolve integration runtime. So during the creation of ADF itself, auto resolve integration runtimes will also be created. So this is an inbuilt integration runtime. If you want to create self-hosted IR or Azure SSIS IR, you need to create manually by going into this manage tab. Okay. So the next tab is data flow debug. So here you can monitor your data flow execution details. So we can also add alerts and metrics on top of the pipeline execution details. So suppose I want to get a notification if my pipeline fails. So I can do that using this alert and metrics option. Now coming to manage tab. So we can create a link service by clicking on this new option. And here we have 100 plus connectors for different data stores. Okay. So let me cancel this for now. And as we discussed integration runtime by default, we have auto resolve. And if you want to create a new integration runtime, we can do that. We can create a self-hosted IR or we can create Azure SSIS IR. Okay, so let me click on cancel. 
and we can also integrate ADF with Microsoft Purview, which is a data governance tool in Azure. Then coming to Git configuration, as we discussed, we can integrate our ADF with Git. So we can set up code repository and we can collaborate with other developers as well. And we can also import and export ARM template, which is Azure Resource Manager template directly from this tab. Okay. So don't worry about it. We will learn everything in details. Now coming to triggers. So we can create new triggers here. So we have an option to create four kinds of triggers. So we will learn all these things in details later. So I'm not going deep into each and everything as it is just an overview video. So coming to these tabs here, you can see ADF updates or release notes by clicking on this option. So suppose a new feature is getting added in ADF, then we will be getting updates about it by the Microsoft in this tab. Okay. Then this tab is to switch data factory. So in the same subscription, if you have multiple data factories, then you can select the other data factory from here and you can switch between data factories. Now coming to this uh, notification option. So suppose if you are publishing your changes, then you will be getting notification here. So this notification will only show notification for the current session. It won't be retaining the notifications from the previous sessions. Okay. And in the settings, you can change your language. ADF supports multiple languages as well. Now coming to help and information, you can get, go to ADF documentation from here. It will redirect you to the Microsoft's official documentation page. And then if you have any query, you can uh, post it in the Q&A platform. That is a community driven platform from Microsoft. And then we have keyboard shortcuts related to ADF. So if you want to commit all the changes, then you can click uh, Alt Shift C. So I'm not going into details as of now. Uh, then if you have any feedback related to ADF, you can click on this I have a feedback and you can directly comment your feedback here and you can give your email address and submit it. Okay. So the same goes if you have any feature suggestion, you can click here and it will redirect you to the Microsoft's ideas portal where you can uh, request for any feature that you want to get implemented in ADF. So if you get enough votes and if the product team thinks that this is a suitable suggestion, then they will consider your suggestion and they will implement it. So that's it for this video guys. Uh, it was just an overview related to ADF studio. Uh, in the next video, we will see uh, what all components are there in ADF and we will learn about it in details. Thank you. Please stay tuned.